Welcome to EPG Padshala. I am Dr. P. P. Ajay Kumar, Professor of English, School of Distance Education, University of Kerala. Today we will discuss the play Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are Dead by Tom Stoppard. This comes under the paper 20th Century English Literature. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are Dead. is actually a subversion of shakespearean play hamlet rosencrantz and guildenstern are minor characters in the play hamlet so the play can be termed as a farcical comedy we can identify a distinct attempt at meta theater and more than that we can find a kind of closeness to the theater of the absurd if rosencrantz and guildenstern appears only seven times in the play hamlet they are on the center stage in stoppard's play they are virtually never absent from the stage in hamlet Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are school chums summoned by King Claudius to probe into Hamlet's bizarre behavior. Hamlet escapes Claudius' plot and engineers instead the executions of Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. In Stoppard's play we have already seen that these two characters become the central figures thus this can be seen as an absurd play dealing with the story of two ordinary men caught up in events they could neither understand nor control it resembles samuel beckett's waiting for godo even though the play is based on hamlet we find that stoppard's play is distinctly different from hamlet in spite of the moments of rich humor hamlet is a tragedy but stoppard's treatment of shakespearean story is a kind of a farcical comedy in this play by stoppard rosencrantz and guildenstern are presented as foolish characters because they were overwhelmed by the power of the shakespearean world at the same time they are comically noble because their ordinary presence seems eventually to deflate the shakespearean high seriousness the adoption of two minor figures from one of the most famous tragedies of shakespeare leads to the creation of a kind of absurdity in the play it is true that stoppard's play borders on absurdity at the same time it is a contrast to the shakespearean characters the shakespearean milieu and the high seriousness of that elizabethan tragedy the use of language in this play is also interesting because we find two different types of languages used in this play one is the language of shakespearean plays and the other is the language of the ordinary men in the contemporary period the juxtaposition of these two different languages to a certain extent can be extremely interesting for the spectator as well as the readers the adoption of these two characters has to be understood 
in a different dimension as well. It refers to a whole lot of issues connected with the hierarchy in a traditional society. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are underdogs, whereas Hamlet, Claudius, and Gertrude the Queen represent the upper dominant section of the society. So the adoption of these two minor characters and their projection as the heroes in this play certainly has political relevance. Stoppard actually attempts to project this idea through his play. In this context, we can see the play as a kind of comic victory for the underdog. In Act 2 of Stoppard's play, Rosencrantz responds to Hamlet's use of Shakespearean language. He comments that half of what he said meant something else and the other half didn't mean anything at all. So the play Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead has to be understood as an experimental play. It is considered to be a parody. Parody is a technique that is used in postmodern writing. As a literary style, it frequently imitates a serious work in order to trivialize its subject, its author, its style or some other target in a satiric or ironic way. There are various examples of parody. But Stoppard's play is a parody with a difference. It does not satirize the original play, that is Hamlet. On the other hand, it is quite respectful and appreciative of its source. We find that apart from Hamlet, it also is parodying Samuel Beckett's Waiting for Godot. The two main char characters, Vladimir and Estragon, in Waiting for Godot are similar to the, the two characters in this play, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. In the play, Waiting for Godot, the characters Vladimir and Estragon play word games and pass the time when they were waiting for someone who never arrives. But the two men presented in Stoppard's play cannot be taken as victims of an absurd, meaningless world. The two characters, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, live in a simpler world where the inevitability of death is not accepted as a very tragic incident but as a very natural experience that is part of everybody's life. The, the play refers to death on many occasions and at one occasion it is suggested that if human beings can calm their minds they will easily realize that it is silly to be depressed by death. That is, it would be just like being asleep in a box. So death is trivialized here. The high seriousness associated with death in the Shakespearean tragedies is rejected. Its triviality 
its ordinariness is projected in this play. It is true that the play Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead is accepted as an absurd play by many. The concept of an absurd play is very much connected with the idea of the absurd absurdity of modern life. The theatre of the absurd arose after the World War II and it flourished in the 1950s. The chief exponents of the absurdist theatre were Eugene Inusco, Jane Janet and Samuel Beckett. They rejected a kind of rational and ordered universe and tried to see human life as absurd and lacking any purpose. They eliminated realistic presentation of the plot and character and tried to present meaningless action on the stage to express the real experience of absurdity. Comparing Beckett's two characters and Stoppard's two characters, we find that Beckett's couple expects that Godot will come, whereas Stoppard's couple are unaware of what they are supposed to do. They were asked to do something by a faceless messenger from the court. While Stoppard's couple are not clearly aware of what they are supposed to do. They were asked to report to the king by a faceless messenger from the court. Another concept that is significant in relation to the play is Meta Theatre. Meta Theatre provides the central structural element of the play Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. Just as in Hamlet, we find in this play meta-theatrical scenes. Meta-theatre refers to a drama within a drama. Certain scenes are staged as plays or dumb shows or commentaries or dramatic theory and practice. In Hamlet, we find the meta play, The Mouse Trap. It provides the meta theatrical element in Hamlet. But Stoppard's entire play can be considered as a piece of meta theater. In Stoppard's play, the two characters, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, are characters from another play. The play also abounds in metatheatrical episodes like the plays Pantomimes of Hamlet in Act 2 and 3, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern's obsessive role playing and the player's death in Act 3 are all elements that connect the play with the concept of meta-theatre. The most interesting part of the play is the way in which it has attempted to present the human predicament. Stoppard's Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead blends the story of Shakespeare's Hamlet with Stoppard's own version of how the two courtiers might have felt and behaved after they were summoned by King Claudius to spy on their schoolmate Hamlet. 
Stoppard tried in this play to elaborate on aspects of their lives that Shakespeare did not specify. What they might have done with Hamlet on the ship to England and many things are unanswered in Shakespeare's play. Stoppard is making an exploration into those experiences which has not been dealt with in Shakespeare's play. So it is clear that Stoppard is playing with the absences in Shakespeare's Hamlet. But even when we say that there is not much connection between these two plays, in Stoppard's play, what we find is that Rosencrantz and Guildenstern meet with the same fate. It is because they die in Shakespeare's play, so they must die in Stoppard's play as well. It is the concept of literary fatalism. They are fated to die. So Stoppard uses this fatalism as a metaphor for the fate that awaits all human beings. He underlines the inevitability of death. It is clear from this that Fate is something that has already been decided. Something humans have no control over. Something that will happen whatever human beings do. And the literary fatality comes from entering a world where events are already decided. So, Stoppard does not attempt to change the fate that was allotted to Rosencrantz and Guildenstern by Shakespeare. The play also ponders over the theme of art and experience. Art and experience were considered to be on two different poles. At the same time, the interrelationship between the two has also been established by many thinkers. In Stoppard's play, he uses tragedies and their spokesperson to emphasize that art can create an illusion that is often more real and convincing than the experience of ordinary life. So Stoppard elaborates on this theme through the play. Sigmund Freud referred to the experience of death. He says that when we come close to dying in our dreams, we wake up or alter the dream so that we become spectators of ourselves. So as soon as we wake up, we lose that sight of death. But in art, we can experience death variously and safely because death in art is not original death. So, so that we can come back to life. So in Stoppard's play, the theme of death is best summed up in the speech of Rosencrantz in Act 2. He says to Guildenstern, do you ever think of yourself as actually dead, lying in a box with a lid on it. Quite honestly and significantly, Guildenstern says no. And Rosencrantz echoes his response, but then the usually dim-witted Rosencrantz 
touches on the essential problem one thinks of it like being a leaf in a box one keeps forgetting to take into account the fact that one is dead we should make all the difference shouldn't it that means you would never know you were in a box would you it would be like being asleep in a box so the concept of death the experience of death is beautifully presented in these lines when human beings attempt to think about their deaths they assume some kind of continued consciousness so after characterizing death as a kind of a sleep he associates death with a mortal dream state but the speciality of the dream is that you there is always the possibility of waking up coming back to consciousness coming back to life it is true that stoppard's play rosencrantz and guildenstern are dead achieved great success and it asserted his position as a major playwright in english literature he got high reputation as a playwright and it is adjudged as a modern classic the play rosencrantz and guildenstern are dead is an experimental play which has a novelty of its own more than that its political nature and its ability to destabilize the existing power structure is to be noted we find that stoppards attempt to project rosencrantz and guildenstern and to present a whole world of ideas connected with death and uh, social hierarchy through this play made it a masterpiece in world drama i hope we have discussed some of the important characteristics of this play and for a detailed analysis please go through the play as well as the secondary materials suggested in the section for further reading thank you